Hello everyone, Ray here. Waiting for almost a year, Samsung's finally updated the mid-range A series. And this is the A5 2017. It's got a much more flagship-like design and it's also IP68 water dust resistant. Let's check this out. One of the most fascinating things about the A-Series 2017 is the design. Not only does it follow the dual glass aluminium frame material choice, but also the rounder, smoother, flagship-like design language, with IP68 water and dust resistant. The A-Series this year adopted a young and feminine colour scheme. Fortunately, we can still get the sleek, stealthy, mature and tacky black colour. In the meantime, the build quality of the A5 2017 is top notch. It's got a 2.5D glass panel on the front, with the rounded corners, and a 3D Gorilla Glass 4 panel on the back, borrowed from the S7. Those glass panels are almost melted to the also black aluminium frame. Yes, melted, there's no plastic cushioning frame between the glass panels and the metal frame. Phones which are equally well built are the Pixel XL and the S7. So everything that we are touching are made out of premium materials. While the navigation buttons just stay low profile and are almost invisible when they're in idle. All the curved edges, the 3D glass panel on the back, is cool to touch, smooth to hold, but also glossy and shiny. The only thing that separates the S7 and the A5 would be the refraction we've found on the back of the S7 Edge. Not a huge difference at all, so move on to the hardware. The UK variant here only supports single SIM, but it's got a unique arrangement when it comes to the microSD card slot. It is a separated slot on the top side of the phone. Speaking of the card slot, it's got a similar rubber water seal near the top end of the tray, like the S7, so flagship treatment again on the A5. The microphone also delivers flagship audio quality. It is indeed crystal clear. Other than the microphone, we've got a USB Type-C port with USB on-the-go support. Another unique feature on the A5 is the right-mounted single speaker. It is a shame that it didn't follow the C-series to boast a dual speaker setup, but it is indeed the least possible place to be covered by your fingers. Speaking of the fingers, another surprise is the fingerprint sensor. It is even quicker and more responsive than the one on the S7. Brilliant. And of course, we've got NFC supported. While it lacks an LED notification light, which is a shame, again, even the C9 Pro, which is another mid ranger from Samsung PAX1. But generally speaking, the A5 2017 shares a similar design as the S7. The key is, it also delivers S series build quality with water and dust resistant, water mid ranger. Performance and features. The A5 2017, yes, 2017 runs Android 6.0.1. What a disappointment. It certainly lacks the latest features from Android 7.0, including the expandable notification preview panel. Thankfully, we've got the same user interface we've found on the S7, with all the goodies from Samsung, like triple tapping the home button to enter one-handed mode, on a 5.2 inches display, fair enough, while double tapping the same button will fire up the camera. It's also got native multi-window support with excellent third-party apps capability, Scroll capture that was originally from the Note 7s also here. Or went Game Center as well. We can take gameplay recording with or without your beautiful faces. And last but certainly not least, keep screen turned off, which is another interpretation of pocket mode, and always on display as well. So basically it's got full S7 features. Performance-wise, the Exynos 7880 octa-core processor under the hood is based on Cortex-A53 architecture, but using the latest 14 nanometers manufacturing process. Day-to-day -day media consumption is indeed a whole lot smoother than last year's A-series devices, but according to our standard app's opening speed test, the A5 2017 is not a flagship killer. It performed actually closer to the C5, another mid-ranger from Samsung. While in the second round, even though the system's backed with 3 gigs of RAM, it succeeded to keep all the casual and small apps in memories, but it also killed perfect angle, reloading the game cost quite a while. Luckily, other games were just fine. It's neither disappointing nor surprising. Overall, a mid ranger. Gaming experience, however, is another story. The 5.2 inches display is not particularly designed for mobile gamers, but the processor and the GPU on the A5 driving the 1080p screen like nothing. Even one of the most demanding game perfect angle, it handled perfectly smooth. 
other modern 3D titles not in Nisu for sure. However, if we take a closer look at the quality of the graphics, it is not playing the game at maximum graphics. Anti-aliasing is also far behind from the flagship models as well. Generally speaking, it runs the same interface we've found on the S7. It packs all the amazing features with respectable smoothness, but not the best multitasking experience and graphics quality for gaming. Now, one of the major key elements of a smartphone, the camera. It packs a 16 megapixels camera with an f1.9 aperture on both the front and the back, while the flat, perfectly fitted camera module also represents no optical image stabilization, no software image stabilization. More on that in a second. Because we've got another disappointment here, the heavily trimmed down version of the camera app. HDR is a separated mode. It does support full 16 megapixels capturing finally, but for normal users who always stick with the auto mode, it is far from user friendly. Meanwhile, the Pro modes only got manual ISO exposure and a few white balance preset to choose with. Where's my manual shutter speed and white balance in Kelvin? Yes, you have to get an S series or Note series phone to get them. Image quality though is decent. The A5 2017 showed a huge improvement in dynamic range, color reproduction, clarity and sharpness compared to last year's model. There are still artifact details not as sharp as we found on the S7. It is more than satisfactory though. Here we've got a series of HDR on and off comparison. Enjoy. It does boost the shadows and produce generally brighter images, but it also makes the images plain, flat and unnatural. It simply doesn't compete with flagship devices including the Pixel and the S7. Indoor and medium to low light environment, the f1.9 aperture on the A5 shines. It shoots bright and saturated photos. However, when it comes to extreme low light photography, the images are still bright and vibrant, but the clarity is not there. The lack of 4K recording, also optical and software image stabilization, the A5 is not the best phone for videography neither. Standing still and holding the phone as stable as I can, the video is kind of usable. But when I started to walk, it is the worst I've seen. Again, if you are into mobile photography, looking for top-notch image quality out of a smartphone, go for the flagship models from Samsung. Multimedia experience. The 5.2 inches Super AMOLED display is gorgeous. Every single pixel illuminates themselves when it's needed, so it delivers breathtaking inky pure deep black, with astonishing contrast ratio, vibrant color and ultra-wide viewing angle. 1080p is not the highest resolution on earth, but packing all the pixels on a 5.2 inches display, even geek like me cannot find any pixelation on the display, the screen is top-notch. The single speaker unfortunately is soft and weak in base. Thankfully I've not covered the speaker accidentally for even once. Thanks for the unique and weird design. Three point five millimeters headphone audio output in the meantime lifts up with the S7. It supports all the flagship features, including the ultra high quality upscaler, which upsamples compressed MP3 soundtracks to high res like quality. It also drives my XBA3 just fine, but the 320 and the HTC 10 drives high impedance headphones much better. 
Here we've come to the battery life. The 3000 mAh battery inside the tiny chassis only has to deal with a 1080p Super AMOLED display and a 14 nanometer based Exynos processor. According to the standard battery life test that plays YouTube videos for 4 hours with maximum screen brightness, the A5 2017 even outperformed the Mate 9 Pro, with a much larger battery but packs a Quad HD display. And for the more all-round battery life test that dials back the brightness to 50%, play YouTube videos for an hour, scroll along the timeline for another hour, force me to play Clash Royale for another hour, Altogether, 3 hours of media consumption, the A5 performed just as incredible as the Mate 9 Pro, with more than 60% of the battery left. In addition, the A5 2017 supports adaptive quick charging as well, which is 9V 1.67A, just like the S7. So, the Galaxy A5 2017, it combines the beautiful, elegant, sleek and refined design, also the top-notch build quality from the S series, with all the Samsung in-house features, with a gorgeous display and satisfactory audio output, and don't forget IP68 water dust resistant, it is a promising mid-range all-rounder. The two major trade-offs that make the hundreds of pounds or dollars difference would be the camera and the processing power. So this is the A5 2017. Like it if you liked it and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. There are also two videos for you to click to watch next. See you next time.